Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is results from a single locus probe DNA fingerprint analysis for a man and his four different children as shown in the figure, which lane contains the DNA of the father. So here is a gel electrophoresis of one locus uh, taken from five people. So uh, one of them is father and four of them are uh, children of this person. How we are going to solve this problem? And first of all, I want to explain you how we are going to solve this problem using this haplotype that FBA are using in order to create unique genetic profile of uh, each person. So none of the persons that live uh, have the same genetic profile. Uh, the same is true for our fingerprints. So that's why this technique also frequently called uh, DNA fingerprinting. The program that contains uh, such profiles of all the suspects and victims called CODIS that stands for uh, Combined DNA Index System and uh, as you see certain uh, sites is used in this system um, one chromosome has two sites and uh, the rest have one side and each side we call locus. So certain loci is used in this system. So uh, basically in each such uh, locus we have a variable number of tandem repeats. And uh, what does it mean? For example, we may have uh, such repetitive sequence as TAGA and in some people the sequence may repeat uh, twice. In other people, this may repeat uh, three times or much more times. So uh, basically, uh, such loci are chosen where we can find repeats between 2, 3 and uh, up to 15, 20 repeats of this uh, core sequence. So uh, scientists know uh, the flanking regions left and right from this variable sequence and scientists can use uh, specially designed primers actually uh, different kits are available from different commercial companies that offers primers for all this certain loci and uh, using these primers we can um, multiply this uh, sequence with the use of PCR technique uh, thousands and millions of times so later when we run a gel fragments of the different size would separate uh, according to their uh, size so uh, basically this is all you need to know to solve this problem and also because uh, here we only use one locus to run this gel, uh, not certain as in CODIS. Um, I would explain you uh, what might happen with one locus. So imagine that uh, we have chromosome, for example, chromosome number two, uh, female, mother of these children would have two such chromosomes because uh, we have all chromosomes um, in two copies one copy from mother side another copy from the father side so imagine that this female may have uh, one such locus with uh, 20 repeats of core sequence and another locus this would be the same locus but I would use the, the different color may have uh, different quantity of repeats say five repeats here now imagine that uh, father of these four children on the chromosome number two 
also would have a different number of tandem repeats in the same locus. So for example 15 repeats and on the other chromosome from uh, his father. So uh, male also would have uh, one of the chromosomes that he got from the mother side and another chromosome that he got from the father side. And uh, on that uh, chromosome he may have 10 repeats of this core sequence. And uh, of course uh, female during meiosis would produce egg cells, male during meiosis would produce um, sperm and egg cells and sperm can combine and would uh, make a zygote that would develop into the child. So the first combination would be this chromosome from the mother side and this chromosome from the father side. So combination for this locus in the child can be 20 repeats from the mother side, chromosome with 20 repeats from the mother side and chromosome with 15 repeats from the father side. So this would be the first combination and uh, as you see uh, we have here two chromosomes, this chromosome and this chromosome. So this is going to be their children and children of course uh, would be deployed. So uh, next variant would be this chromosome from the mother side and this chromosome from the father side. So a possible combination would be 20 from the mother side, 20 repeats and uh, 10 repeats from the father side. So this would be the second combination. The third combination would be this chromosome from the mother side and this chromosome from the father side. So five, five repeats and 15 repeats. So this would be the third variant possible. And the fourth variant would be this chromosome from the mother side and this chromosome from the father side. So this time we have five repeats and 10 repeats. So as you see, four total combinations possible for uh, one locus. Now imagine how many combinations we may have for all 13 loci. And uh, total number of such combinations would exceed the population of our planet. So this is very reliable method to tell if uh, some biological sample belongs to some particular person and this is up to detectives and uh, judge to decide whether this uh, um, evidence would be a proof of presence or if this person commit a crime or as in our case uh, we can find who is the father of the children and if children are related to each other. So now imagine that we used uh, primers and we multiplied uh, this locus. And as you see, uh, our uh, fragment would be of four different sizes. So different combinations are possible in the children, but uh, now imagine that we run a gel, so we load our samples here. All samples represent a mixture. And when we run a gel, on one side we apply a positive charge and on the other side we apply negative charge. Because DNA is negatively charged, uh, DNA would travel in the direction of the positive charge and the smaller um, the fragment uh, the faster it would travel and the longer distance and the bigger fragment the slower it would uh, travel at the same period of time so if we 
take a look here we can say that uh, for example this fragment is the biggest and this fragment and this one is the smallest one because they traveled the longest distance now please pay attention that in each combination we have one of the alleles that came from the father side and another allele that came from the mother side so we don't have such uh, variants here with two alleles from the mother side or two alleles from the father side always we have uh, one allele from the mother side another allele from the father side so using this information we can easily solve this problem for example let's take a look at this genotype can this genotype be of the father for example if this would be uh, his child one of the alleles present here another is absent probably this is from the mother side so let's take a look at this child one allele present here uh, another is absent in father's um, genotype but this child doesn't have any of the alleles of the father so we can say this variant not number one cannot be a father of uh, these children because one of uh, his alleles always have to be present in the genotype of the child one allele from the father side once again another allele from the mother side let's take a look at this genotype so this if this would be a father's genotype this can be genotype of the child this also can be genotype of the child because one allele is present here variant number four also can be a child because this allele present both in father and a child but this variant exclude uh, this variant as a father because none of these alleles we can find in father so no this first variant no the second variant can be a father of these children let's take a look at this variant and as you see this allele present in child one and two and uh, also this allele is present in child four and five so uh, this can be a genotype of the father because one of the alleles present in two children and another allele we can see present in other two children and uh, we can say that this allele and this allele as long as this allele and this allele are came from the mother side we can say that these two alleles are very heavy they uh, didn't uh, travel a long distance but these two alleles are very light and uh, traveled a long distance so as you see uh, our answer would be that person number three is a father of uh, children one two four and five so the correct answer would be answer c but let's also consider a line four if uh, this genotype could be of the father uh, if this would be a child we have one allele present here one allele present here uh, one allele present in uh, line number two but uh, genotype in line number one doesn't has no this allele no this and a child as you remember have to have at least one allele from the father so this cannot be a father and the last variant could uh, father with this genotype uh, be father of these children he can be a father of these two children he can be a father of a uh, child in line number one but this genotype cannot be a father of the child in the line two because uh, this genotype is not present none of these alleles is present 
in uh, this genotype. So the only correct answer here would be answer C, line 3, represent um, a father, and line 1, 2, 4, and 5 represent 4 children. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.